just fun. Good little mini. Brings back all sorts of good memories. Welcome to the Haggerty Bull Market 2022. In this episode, we've selected this mini adventure. The R50 Mini Cooper went into production in the year 2000, and if you didn't want any of the many options, it was available for £11,600. Interestingly, much of its development had been overseen by the great nephew of Sir Alec Isagonis, the designer of the original. But the development was far from straightforward. The R in R50 stands for Rover because, well, the whole birth of this car is really rather sort of mixed up. It was of course BMW and Rover, and then when BMW sold Rover, it took the engineers on the Mini and they went to Ricardo and worked under contract. And there were two different designs as well to start with. Rover had something that was sort of engineering-wise much closer in ethos to the original Mini. But of course, this Frank Stephenson design won out in the end. And there's a particular story about the Frank Stephenson design process that I've, I've always rather loved because when they had the clay model in the studio and the board of directors were coming to look at it, somebody pointed out to Frank that they hadn't actually put an exhaust in it. Frank, being the resourceful man that he is, quickly grabbed a nearby beer can and stripped the paintwork off the outside of it so it was just silver and then popped it in the rear bumper. The board of directors came down, loved the design, but one of them did come up to him afterwards and say, don't spend so long designing the exhaust next time. True story. Anyway, these early cars, these early Y-Reg cars, particularly with the ending OBL, are becoming really quite sought after. The OBL variants are the ones that were registered by BMW UK originally, and only about 130 of them exist. I actually had an early Mini. It wasn't quite a wide plate, it was a 51 plate, an RE51 DMO. So I have a bit of a soft spot for these. I actually nearly ended up buying mine back recently, but just missed out. Anyway, sentimentality aside, why is it on the bull market list? Well, here to tell us is John Mayhead, editor of the UK Haggerty Price Guide. The R50 Mini Cooper is on the bull market list this year because it is a bookend car. You know, it is the first of this new generation of Mini. It was a Cooper and really it, it, looking at where they are now, um, the, the value-wise, they're, they're really quite reasonable. The price guide at the moment has uh, the Condition 4 um, Mini Cooper at £600, all the way up to £4,100 for a really exceptional one. We don't see R50 Mini Coopers rising hugely in value, but we do think that they are maybe getting a new generation of people into what are called emerging classics, what we call emerging classics. Um, you know, these are uh, very affordable cars. There's lots of choice there, and they're cars that are really easy to drive. So if you're used to driving a modern car, this won't be any surprise to you. John there clearly trying to do me out of a job on this one, but unsurprising though it may be, I'm going to tell you what it's like to drive nonetheless. To drive today, well, they're still really fun. I mean, just the interior is still, there's nothing else quite like it. I love the little rev counter there, all the toggle switches down here. The engine is better than I remember. So it's a, it was a Chrysler BMW sort of joint partnership on this Tritec engine, this 1.6 litre naturally aspirated four cylinder. It puts out 113 brake horsepower and 110 pounds foot of torque, although if you can find one with the officially sanctioned JCW pack, then power rises to 130 brake horsepower. Of course, if it had stayed as a Rover, then it would probably have had a K-series engine. The gearbox, the R65 Rover gearbox, or the Midland gearbox, is particularly nice in this. Later it went to a five-speed Getrag, and the Cooper S's always had six-speed Getrags, but this early five-speed is particularly sweet. Always remember you wanted the smallest wheels as possible on these, so the little 15-inch wheels if you can find them. And they always cornered pretty flat. They're also really light, 1,050 kilos, that's all these weighed. They're not particularly quick in a straight line, about 0 to 60 in sort of just over nine seconds, but they feel sort of perkier than that somehow. They're just fun. Good little mini. Brings back all sorts of good memories. 
That then is a brief look at the cheapest and perhaps most cheerful of this year's 10 cars. Tempted? Let us know in the comments below. But perhaps you're more of a serious sports car person, or maybe you're more inclined towards big power. If so, be sure to look out for the rest of the Carfection films on the other entries in the 2022 Haggerty Bull Market. Oh, hello. Thank you very much indeed for watching that. I hope you enjoyed it. We've got uh, 10 in this series, so do make sure you are subscribed to Carfection. Have a look at the uh, Haggerty articles as well, because they've written about them so uh, frequently in more depth than I had time to talk about in some of the cars. So have a look at those as well. We've got links to all those in the description down below. So yeah, there we go. Hope you enjoy it. See you next time.